In order for our measure values to display correctly in a browser, we need to have dimension usage specified correctly. For example, here's a view of the Cube browser showing reseller sales amount and internet sales amount by product category. We can see that reseller sales amount properly divides up the grand total sales by category, but internet sales amount repeats the grand total for each of the categories. When we see repeating values like this, that's usually a clue that a relationship is not defined properly in our dimension usage for this cube. Dimension usage appears as a tab in our cube designer, and it shows each of the dimensions associated with the cube laid out as rows, and each of the measure groups laid out as columns. At the intersection of each dimension and measure group, we can see whether or not a relationship exists. If we see a word at that intersection, then we know that there is a relationship. That is, Analysis Services understands how to aggregate values for measures within a measure group for any attribute of that dimension. If all we see is a gray box, however, there is no relationship defined. So here we see that product and internet sales do not have a relationship and so Analysis Services can only compute a grand total value for product, but is not able to add up the product key columns in the fact table to arrive at the appropriate category values like it can for reseller sales amount where that relationship is defined. Now we know from looking at our data source view that the Internet Sales Fact Table does have a column for products, so there should be a relationship defined. On the other hand, if we look at the reseller sales fact table in the data source view, we'll find that there is no customer key column, and therefore we cannot create a relationship between customer and reseller sales. So if we were to put customers on rows instead of category here, we would see the 80 million repeated for each of our customers in the reseller sales amount column, but the internet sales amount column would properly display the total sales for each individual customer. So a missing relationship is not necessarily a problem, but it's important during the development process that we confirm that we have all of the relationships that we need defined correctly. When we need to add a relationship, we'll go to the Dimension Usage tab of the Cube Designer and click a button in the box at the intersection between the dimension and the measure. And then that displays the Define Relationship dialog box. There are many different types of relationships, but the most common one, and the one that we're going to explore in this module, is the regular relationship. And in that type of relationship, the dimension table is joined directly to the fact table. We identify the granularity attribute, that is, which attribute in the related dimension corresponds to a value that's found in the fact table. When we identify the granularity attribute, the dialog box will automatically display the corresponding dimension column that represents the source for the selected granularity attribute. And then it's our job to select a corresponding column from the measure group. When we've completed our task, we'll see the new relationship appear in the dimension usage. Then when we deploy the changes and browse the cube again, we'll see the correct values display.